Hi. Now for this next part of the question, we're told that the line L has equation x equals 13 and crosses C at the points P and Q as shown. And in part C, we've got to find the y-coordinate of P and the y-coordinate of Q. Now remember, we had the equation of the circle and in the previous part, I showed you that this circle could be reduced to this particular form x minus 10 all squared plus y minus 8 all squared equals 25. Okay, so that's an alternative version for the equation of the circle. So if you'd like to pause the video, give this a go, come back when ready, and you can check your work solution with mine. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. Well, we know then that the equation of this line L is x equals 13. So this point P and this point Q, their x coordinates will be 13. And since they lie on the circle, then all we need to do is substitute x equals 13 either into this equation and work out what y is, or substitute it into this equation and work out what y is. And it's up to you, whichever equation you feel that you want to substitute that into. Well, I'm going to substitute in equation two because I think that that's a lot easier to work with than equation one. And so I'm just going to say then that when x equals 13, okay, I'm going to sub this in equation two, sub in equation two. And if I do that, we've got 13 minus 10 here, which is going to be three. So we've got three that is squared. Then we've got plus y minus eight all squared equals the 25. Well, we know three squared is nine. So if I subtract nine from both sides, I'm going to be left with y minus 8 all squared equals 25 minus 9. I'll just write that in, 25 minus 9. And we know that that is 16. So you've got y minus 8 all squared equals 16. Now there's no need to expand this bracket, okay? What we can do is that we can take the square root of both sides. And if we do, that means then we're therefore going to have y minus 8 equals the square root of 16. But don't forget that when we take a square root, it can be plus or minus. So that means that therefore we've got y minus 8 equals plus 4. That's the square root of 16 if we take the positive value. And if we take the negative value, we have got y minus 8 equaling negative 4. So therefore, if we add 8 to both sides, we've got y equals 4 plus 8, which is 12. And if we add 8 to both sides in this equation, we've got y equals 8 minus 4, which is 4. Now we need to find the y-coordinate of p and the y-coordinate of q. So the y-coordinate of p has got to be greater than q, so therefore the y-coordinate p has got to be the 12. So let's just summarize at the end by saying therefore the y-coordinate of p okay, is 12 and for q it is going to be the 4. All right, so there's our two answers there. Well, I hope you can see now why I decided to use equation two, purely because I felt that it was easier than working with equation one. Less steps, we, as long as we square root both sides rather than expanding this bracket. There was no need to expand the bracket. If we had used equation one to work out what y was, we would have ended up having to factorize a quadratic equation in terms of why? All right. So uh, you might like to give that a try though and just check out that you do get these answers and then you'll be able to better compare the methods.